All right. Well, here we are with Miss Valerie Scaliola. I practiced that about five times uh, with Haven Breathwork for Breath to Breath. Valerie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Parrot. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, absolutely. All right. Well, let's give you where dues are um, needed. Valerie Scaliola is a certified breathing coach and facilitator based in the San Francisco Bay Area. She became passionate about breathwork and somatic practices at a time when she was stuck in survival mode, anxious, stressed, completely overwhelmed, and burnt out. When she discovered conscious breathing, everything changed. Soon after practicing daily and experimenting with different breathwork techniques and movements, she learned how to properly release stress and regulate her nervous system. She noticed that her anxiety no longer disrupted her life and that she was on a path to healing which at that point she felt a calling towards her life purpose and wanted to share and teach this work with others. After becoming a certified breath coach and facilitator, Valerie created a set of offerings, including her signature six-week program, Breath of Life, to coach to others, their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. In her practice, she draws from a collection of somatic-based healing modalities to help her clients release stress and regulate their nervous systems. Her unique approach blends pranayama, therapeutic breathing, gentle movement, and self-discovery. Her passion lies in creating and holding space for people to be seen, feel safe, let go, and heal. Valerie is currently working towards certification in integrated somatic therapy, excuse me, integrated somatic trauma therapy. And in December 2022, she looks forward to bringing more trauma-informed care and practices to her clients. Valerie, nice bio. Thank you. Thank you so You're much. You're so welcome. Well, thank you for, for sharing all that because I feel like, um, and just side note listeners, I ask everyone to send me a bio so that I make sure I don't, I don't leave out any of the good stuff, but really it's, it's always a journey and it's always incredible to look back and think about all the things and all the steps that took for you to get where you are. So with that, I, I'm so glad that you kept going. I'm so glad that you figured out for you what you needed and and you were able to, to put it all together and then further share that with others. And, um, and I'm really kind of blabbering, but essentially blending this into my first question is your breath of origin. So playing off of family of origin, breath of origin really is like, what's your personal testimonial? What is your, your path that led you to where you are now? And just anything you'd like to share in between. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. It's a great question because, you know, we're, I think we're always on like these eternal journeys, right? So you touched on some of it in my bio. Um, and so it really began for me in the middle of the pandemic, which I feel is like the beginning of all great stories these days. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's when it all started. So I was um, working at home full time with my two kids who were then homeschooling because they were sent home. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just was really stressed out, overwhelmed, you know, scared, isolated, you know, all yeah. the things that we were going through at that time. Um, but my anxiety, which I hadn't properly dealt with for years, just skyrocketed. It was debilitating. And so I really, um, I've, I've practiced yoga on and off for about 20 years. And so I was starting to just try to find different ways to cope with this stress. And, you know, at first it was like a glass of wine or two at night to help calm my nerves. And that seemed to help, but I'm like, that's not sustainable. I don't no. really want to go there. So, um, so I started practicing yoga more. And then what I really started to notice was like the breathing part of it and, and the pranayama and the ujjayi breath and noticing that when I would stop and do yoga and focus on the breathing that I would just completely kind of transform the way that I feel. Mm -hmm. So I was like, there's something there, right? And so I started to like look more into breathing practices. Well, what, you know, what other kind of techniques can I do? And I found a couple that, um, hey, one of my favorites, you've probably heard of it is the four, seven, eight breathing. Oh yeah. Classic. And <laughs> yes, it's 
just completely would melt my stress oh. and anxiety. And I, and I, so, you know, just really noticed like there's something more here. So I kind of, I just started like looking more and more into um, different techniques. I bought all these breathing books. Yeah. Um, I was scrolling on Instagram one day and got this ad for um, a breath coach training. And I was like, huh, okay. I just felt this ping, like I need to do this. Yeah. And so, you know, at first I just wanted to learn more for myself, but as I was going through that um, program and, you know, really exploring how to breathe properly, yeah. how to um, regulate your nervous system, you know, and, and just learning about the science behind all of it. Yeah. Um, I realized that, yeah, maybe I do want to help other people with this because it had helped me so much. Yeah. So, um, so through that, you know, I, I started practicing daily. I started, um, trying different kinds of methods that are out there. So I went to a couple of classes that were more of like a therapeutic mm -hmm. technique and more of like an experiential, um, you know, like an hour of active breathing. And I had like the most profound experience in, in one of those sessions. And, and it was meant to like release you know, years of pent up stress and trauma and emotion. And I didn't really expect to have the kind of experience that I did, but I totally, like, I don't even know what happened. I think I blacked out at some point, <laughs> but I just I cried and I cried. And, and I realized that there was, you know, a point in time where something had really traumatized me and I didn't realize that. And it just came out and I felt so much lighter and felt like this immense amount of self-love for myself. And so I'm like, okay, so there's like, you know, the scientific like nervous system regulation yeah. side of breathing. And then there's this other side where it's like connected to spirit and it's more yeah. esoteric. And um, so I've, you know, just kind of explored blending the two. And I think that's where, um, you know, I like to bring that into my practice is like right. a little bit of both. Um, so, so from there, you know, I, I just started to help friends and, um, you know, work, I started working with a lot of, um, it seemed I was attracting a lot of moms, stressed out moms, right? <laughs> because I think they could see. Lord knows they need help. We, everyone need. needs help, but yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, so yeah, I think there was just, you know, there's a connection there and they can see themselves in my story and want to get help just learning to be more present, learning how to change the way you breathe to change the way you feel. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I just sort of where I've ended up today is um, with this um, beautiful, like so special to me coaching practice yeah. um, that I bring in, you know, different elements um, to help with nervous system regulation. And most of the time for the people I'm working with, it's getting into that parasympathetic state because mm -hmm. we're dealing with stress and anxiety here. And so yeah. it's not enough to just breathe on the spot when you need it. It's more about creating a consistent breathwork practice that you do proactively every day. Oh, to, yeah. Yeah, to help keep you reg regulated and, and um, feel the way you want when you want to. Um, so yeah, since then, um, you know, I've I have a twenty year career in marketing. Ooh, for, like, yeah, oh, that's fun. Yeah, uh, a couple months ago, I left that world to pursue this full time. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Stop the presses. So we're talking like a couple of months old. Yes. Cheers. Yes. Congratulations. You heard it here first. <laughs> this, this is Haven breath work full time now, right? Yes. Oh. Yes. I just, I, I started to have this um, man to, to pursue this full time and just mm -hmm. put my everything into it. And so, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's been quite a transition because yeah. I just like jumped off this cliff and I'm like, all right, let's go, let's do it. <sighs> um, but it's been an amazing ride so far. And so that's my journey 
oh, up today, but you know, it's, it keeps going, right? There's, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm doing this like um, trauma training now. And so I'm really excited to see where that takes me. Yeah. Um, I know that you have your yoga teacher training. Yeah. I have dreamt of doing that forever. Yeah. And so that might take me somewhere else. I, yeah. So, as it was, yeah. I, okay. I've, I've got a lot of thoughts. So let me use like my executive functioning. I'm going to pair it down. Um, <laughs> First off, thank you always for sharing. I think it's yeah. it's such a gift when people get to share a side of themselves and basically connect the dots of how they got where they are. It's it's cool to like listen and also it's cool to like see as you're retelling it because I think in the telling of our stories and the telling of our our struggles, we make it a little bit more digestible for other people to understand that that's normal. And a couple of things that I that I've just like learned to be true is the only thing that is absolutely guaranteed is challenge and change. So stop being surprised. I mean, you can be surprised, but it's going to keep happening in different forms, different ways and different people and different lessons, but it's going to keep happening. So breath and breathing well will help you in those transitions. And then two, um, I loved how you got really curious instead of critical about your own journey of the breath. So understanding that, oh man, something is like, something's really different as you found yourself mid pandemic. I wanted to interject and be like, were you like me, like drinking wine, watching Tiger King being like, this can't be it. (laughs) This can't be all there is. Help. Not good. (laughs) I know like, I've done every puzzle I can't handle this anymore um but yeah but you just yeah but your words like you you just dug into it and found different ways and modalities and what I think is really cool is your authentic I there's a couple of things one I'll say like your trauma showing or your authenticity showing and you finding and these moms finding you your authenticity is showing and it's like shining and even more so i I'm a dog mom. My dog literally is in my lap and I can only speak from experience, (laughs) but I, I'm so fascinated by co-regulation, especially when it comes Mm -hmm. to like creating safe environments for young children or for nurturing or for healing. And by you working with moms that are also essentially the emotional managers of their entire home, whether it's fair or not. Yeah, you are giving them skills, then that can bleed into the whole, the whole nurturing system of their family unit. Yeah. And I also know to be true and firmly believe that our energy is our contribution, that we can be of service simply by being open and supporting and loving. And what that really means to me is uh, when people say like, talking about politics or we have to do all these things and all these things are wrong. I'm like, I'm going to show up by loving everyone and by listening Mm -hmm. and by not fighting and by modeling something different. And that can also be like, my contribution is creating an amazing six week course that puts in together all the things that I have experienced and found helpful and meaningful. And then finding the people that were similar to you that also need that help and support. So basically yeah, exactly. just a whole round of applause for everything that that you just said and and what I would love to transition into is like blending the science and the spirit because I I call myself western woo-woo as in like <laughs> I have one foot in western medicine and one foot in eastern medicine or even just ideals and ideology because I think really it's both so we live yes. in western yes. society so we can't fully integrate all Eastern practices because we're, it's just not going to fit in, in our system, but we can mm-hmm. absolutely blend the two to make it more meaningful. And, and I think, I think there's value in like reading scientific studies. I think there's value in speaking the language that is understood by your audience. And I think there's value in understanding our body and all these different perspectives. So that, and that's something we chatted about prior to to me recording is that loving and appreciating and blending science and spirit, you know, esoteric and yin with the biology and physiology of the yang and making it really cohesive because 
or all cohesive. So just tell me like, what's been your draw and your experience with blending those two things? What are you loving? What feels right? Yeah. Go. <laughs> Go. <laughs> it's so fascinating to yeah. me um, because, you know, and, and starting, I think, you know, in the pandemic too, I've, I've been more on a spiritual journey as well. Like along with the yoga, I've been meditating and, you know, reading some, some spiritual books and, and things like that and getting into, you know, tarot cards and crystals and so yes the western woo definitely identifies with me I love it but um yeah so I think like the importance of of blending the two because and you mentioned this before but you know breath work typically what you see online anyway falls into one of two camps it's either like super super scientific and very complex which it is or it's more woo woo and it's and it's more um you know aligned with like spirit and so I do see a few people in the space that are that are blending the two and I appreciate that because you know there is for for those who who need or want the the proof that it works right there there's just different breaths depending on what your goals are so you know you can um you know, if you're sort of stuck in this chronic fight or flight mode, there's so many beautiful techniques you can do to bring you into rest and digest. And similarly, when you are feeling kind of unmotivated or stuck or tired and you need like a boost of energy, there's a breath you can do for that. And then there's breathing in between to like bring to your life when you need some balance. So it's, it's all related to our nervous system and and our vagus nerve. Right. And, and I just, I love talking about that stuff um, and really showing people that it's, it's not just cliche. Okay. You need to breathe. Like it's actually changing your physiology. And then on the other side of it, you know, there's, there are some techniques and and just ways of breathing that help you connect with your inner peace and your higher self. There is, and I don't think they really know why, but breathing in a certain way, there's, you know, there's more therapeutic techniques that access your subconscious. Okay. There's not really an a scientific explanation behind that, but you are able to access like these stored memories and things that have happened to you in your life and, and whatever kind of needs to come up and out does. And, and that's just so healing, right? So um, in my practice, in my offerings, I, I like to help people with both because there's, you know, times that you um, need to you know, deal with a stressful situation and there's a breath for that. And then sometimes there's a time where you just kind of feel disconnected to yourself and, um, you know, looking for tools that can help you, you know, with self-love and self-acceptance. And so, and so that's the other side of it. Um, so I like blending the two and I also like bringing in, um, somatic practices, right? So with our body. So, moving and and I think again it it really blends science and spirit you're moving with your breath in gentle ways um, that can help you open up and and it's a helping you shift into your parasympathetic nervous system and b it's also like connecting the way you move to the way you breathe and to me that feels like more of a spiritual experience oh a hundred 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 plus percent agree (laughs) all of of those things and and true and I think truly also we don't always have to understand why something works I know yeah or at least for me I'm now at a point and you know let me back that up the thing that I was going to say is we are the experts of our own bodies like Mm -hmm. you I, I say this in my classes I say this to my clients it's like you know I'm here to guide and support you but you ultimately get to decide what you need. And mm-hmm. that goes for like postures and flow and asana and essentially like if something can feel good in your body, don't do it. But yeah. also as like, you know, you get to try out all these exercises, you get to decide what do you need because then you're actually making it your practice. And for me specifically, what's helped me immensely of just like 
moving through life is like holding space for things I don't yet understand, may not even understand, but being okay with that because you can at least like hold space for it under, with the understanding that it's there. We can acknowledge that something's there. We can acknowledge maybe something's not right or something needs more, more assessment or needs more help. And this can be like not understanding why we're losing our breath or not understanding why we have these hard feelings, not understanding even like where we feel something in the body, but all of those things work. And then what I really loved is you touched on and I want to know more about is like the somatic section and the components of it of movement. And I believe you said uh, you're adding some somatic trauma therapy. So tell me what you're learning. Like what, what, yeah. are, what are you adding? What's like blowing your mind as far as that additional lens that you're bringing to your practice? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I already in my practice kind of offer, you know, different kinds of movement and like, yeah. not necessarily yoga, but the, you know, yeah. there are some like yoga type poses in there, but, um, you know, really encourage people to explore things like legs up the wall pose or like using a a pillow or a bolster to help open up the chest and the heart meridian and the lungs and Mm -hmm. and breathe really deep breathing in these kinds of poses um and I also do breath initiated movement which does yes sound like yoga but it's it's um, very slow and just concentrated with the breath. And that helps you come into the present moment. And, and it, it is almost a form of meditation, right? I mean, breath work is a form of meditation. It, it is. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And so I try to really help my clients understand that. So, um, and other somatic practices I've learned, you know, there's, there's some tapping techniques, there's bilateral stimulation where, you know, you're getting both sides of the body. Um, there's, um, you know, things that you can do, I don't know, like in an anxiety attack that, that helps you kind of get out of that, um, panic mode, like ice on the body or shaking, like our, our nervous systems are designed to move. So when we don't feel right, and we feel like our skin is crawling and our heart is racing, like use that energy, right? So bouncing up and down, shaking, like this is all stuff to help us release adrenaline and get into our body and get out of our mind. So um, I just, I've become really interested in these kinds of somatic practices and wanted to learn more and explore them more, especially as they relate to like trauma processing and recovery, because I do, I've worked with a few clients who, um, you know, identify with having trauma that is really you know, affected their anxiety or, you know, they're having panic attacks all the time. And so I just want to be able to serve them better in that capacity. So I actually, I just started the training this week. I haven't really dived into it. So I can't share any, any new like techniques I've learned just yet. Um, But just like starting the process, you know, and, and connecting with others in this space who, um, you know, want to learn more about trauma recovery and processing and, um, and just really bring in that level of like trauma informed care. So when it comes up, like what's the best way to yeah. talk to someone and hold space for them and really make them feel safe. So I'm just so excited to dive in and learn all of that over the next few months. Well, I was going to say, asking for a friend, AKA asking for me, what training, <laughs> what training are you doing? What, like, what's yeah. the name of it or who's it through? It's, Cause I'd love it's to. Through the, yeah. It's through the Embody Lab. Have you heard Oh, okay. Yeah. They offer um, all yes. kinds of workshops and trainings all the time. Um, I think this is the second time they're doing this integrative somatic trauma uh, training. So it's, yeah, it's a great group of people. There's quite a lot of people in, in the, um, certificate program. And, um, I think it's just the, the leaders and the directors that they've brought in are so rich in knowledge. So it's so far, it's been amazing. Well, I, I'm getting chills because I'm like, 
uh, for you. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to add this to my list, which, right. I mean, which is a great thing, but I mean, we've all had trauma and I love the the idea of trauma being like a capital T or a little T yes. or a curse of T. I talk a, about that all the time. Yeah, or like it's a bold or a metallic or underlined. Yeah. And, yeah. and what I think is fascinating is like, we just need better language to understand it. And I love Okay. So what, what I was hearing about you talking about like tapping and bilateral stimulation. So my background being in speech pathology, we would write, we would write goals and like talk about like what the goal would be. So let's say like, we'll just use an articulation one, like using, using correct tongue placement for T, which is up here Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now, like to feel that in your body, to be able to do it. There are so many different supports that you need. We might use visual cues. I, I just modeling it or using a mirror so they could see where it is. And then actually mm-hmm. using tactile cues, like placing obviously with gloves, like placing your fingers on their tongue and then auditory cues. Like it looks like this and then discriminatory cues. Like this is correct. This is incorrect. Um, or like giving them two, two things to choose from. So they receptively can choose versus like expressively having to do it. And this is how we learn. It's not just like yeah. one way, like you've got to feel it. You got to do it. You got to see yes. it, you got to repeat it and then do it all over again so that you can create these neural pathways so that your body has a plan. So it actually has a path. And what I think is hilarious and also like, duh, is that you know, we don't want to have to think about all the freaking steps to all the things we have to do every single day. We want like a set system. And that essentially is our processing, like our programming. And we don't think about all the steps and brushing our teeth or turning on a car or, you know, getting ready because we've integrated and consolidated those into like just driving or taking mm-hmm. your teeth. And essentially that's what like the breathing is. And I loved how you were talking about it earlier of like practicing it, you know, consistently before the, before the panic attack. So your body has a plan. And yeah, I mean, if we're so being good. honest, like the human body, I, I, I don't have time to think about every step. So in that sense, I'm going to say I'm lazy or I'm smart, but essentially whatever pattern <laughs> of breathing that we have, if we're going through that rabbit hole, every, any pattern of breathing that we have, that's the one we're most likely going to use when we are in crisis. So by planning and preparing and basically role-playing using all these different somatic and uh, sensory oriented supports, you're just setting yourself up for success. I mean, I think it, really everyone needs to practice what to do because if the pandemic taught us anything it's oh god we all need help and we all need tools and we need tools that aren't a pill and we need things that we can do anywhere anytime so mm-hmm. that we can listen yeah. we can be present we're not jumping down people's throats we're not like jumping out of our skin yeah um so yeah. true and i think at the very base of all of it of of breath work is yeah awareness, breath uh, awareness, right? Yes. So, and, and that's one of the things that, that really fascinated me is that I noticed, you know, when I was like feeling like I was living in survival mode, like anxious all the time, my breathing was shallow mm-hmm. and fast. And so that was just perpetuating mm-hmm. my fight or flight response. It was perpetuating all these other symptoms in my body. And so once you can like notice that, and, and, you know, I still notice it today. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's ongoing, like situational when you're like nervous about something or you're, you're actually in a dangerous situation. Do you notice that your breath changes? Yeah. And so being aware of that and being able to like stop and pause and just come back to yourself, take a deep breath, do one of the breathing patterns that works. Um, and then that sh- can totally shift your, your mood and the way you feel. Um, and that's the other thing to, you know, I, I really um, try to explain and, and work with people on is that not every technique works for everyone, oh. right? So no. I've had people come to me that say like, oh, I tried box breathing and it made me feel horrible. And it's like, that's okay, but it's not for you, right? There's yeah. so many other, you know, types that we can draw from out there and, and you have to kind of 
experiment to see what works for you. But I like how you were saying it's good to have that plan in place. So in the moment when you need it, you're like, okay, this is my go-to. This is what I need to do right now. Oh, and, and then, yeah. And then on top of that, just practicing daily. So you have that like proactive mm-hmm. part of it in place too. So, um, and it's cumulative too. I think like the more you're breathing, the more you're focusing on breath and using breath work, the more regulated you become. And it and it just it happens, right? Yeah. And so you can become that more present, patient, you know, whatever, whatever your goals are for how you want to be as a person, how you want to show up in life, what kind of parent you want to be, what kind of worker you want to be. Um, breathwork can really help you get there. I agree. I agree. And it's, and too, I mean, clearly, clearly we are, we're interested in the same thing, but, yeah. and so it makes this conversation super smooth and easy to flow. But I, I just get really excited when at least someone's willing to listen as to like what breath has to offer. And I don't know about you, but for me, it's like, I see actually, okay, this a little bit of a tangent, but, but hang with me for a little bit. I, uh, there's this podcast I've been listening to called normal gossip. And I absolutely love it because I don't gossip about people and I don't enjoy mm-hmm. doing it, but what I'm writing it down, <laughs> I know. I mean, so basically it's like someone calls in and it is a story that is juicy, but it's like a friend of a friend of a friend. It is a complete, um, just treat because I don't know any of these people, but what I've been using it as so that I can like justify to myself, like this is still helping me is it's a perfect example of how our ego and unwillingness to change just completely blows up in our, in our face. Mm -hmm. And luckily it's not my face, but it's like, all right, you want an example of how being unwilling to change or listen can just go completely South. All right. Just listen to these stories and you're going to laugh along the way too. But I, I think the whole point of breath is so coming back from breath, small tangent on ego and not breathing deeply and digging your heels in and keep doing what you've been doing, because that's the way you've always been doing it. All right, cool. You keep doing that until you realize, oh, it's not going to get you as far as you want. But when you're willing to step back, it's just, again, holding the unknown, like, can, can you hold the idea or at least like think about carving out some space, the idea of trying something different. And um, David Jackson, Jacko, he said, which I just think is the best quote is like, just because you do it automatic doesn't mean it's efficient. And just because you don't have to think about it doesn't mean you can't. So I, the, love uh, that. I, I know literally I was like writing this down, <laughs> writing this down. Thank you, Jacko. Uh, it's so true. It's like, the quality of your breath truly reflects the quality of your life. And mm-hmm. something I've really been asking clients, and it makes a lot of sense to me and why, why I think it's important to bring the emotion side also into like the biology and the biometrics mm-hmm. is because what is stealing your breath? That's the question I ask. And that can be anything from like loops, negative narratives, mm-hmm. uh, family, just tension things that are tightening your chest that are putting like pits in your stomach and what's so beautiful about the breath is it's absolutely reflecting how you feel and how you're doing Mm -hmm. I mean you might think you're doing great and your body's like oh no we're not and your breath will reflect that and And you might think yes and then too you might be thinking you're doing awful and really your body's like we're doing okay. Like you can, you can calm, like you can be all right. And it's things for me as like the bolt score, the, uh, body oxygen level test. I love that one, which is like the breath holds. Yeah. Use that a lot to like help correlate emotions and physiology together. It's like seeing like, how are we actually doing? What's our, what's our perception of how we're doing? And Oh, what was I even saying? I don't know. But basically, I just really like, I really like how you blend the two. I really like keeping one foot grounded in life and then one foot grounded in like um, 
continuing your education, continuing to like be out there. And really it's our body. It's being, being intellectual as well as grounded at the same time, blending them all together. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yes to all of that. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I like how you're talking about, you know, the emotional part of it too, oh, because God. yeah, um, every emotion we have is tied to the breath. So all of them, all of them, like when you're scared, your breath changes, when you're mad, your breath changes, when you're, when you're joyful, your breath changes. So I think it's so powerful just to notice that, you know, throughout the days, throughout the hours, throughout the minutes, right? Minute to minute, we, we can change. And, um, and there's just that close correlation with, how we feel and how we breathe. And so that that's what makes it so powerful to know that you, you have the power to change the way you feel just by yes. changing the way you breathe. <laughs> All of it. I thought, well, Valerie, this, this has been such a beautiful conversation. Also second female, oh. second female guest that I've had on. So amazing. I, think, I know I, I really enjoy just advocating and supporting other people in this space. And like we were talking about earlier, like, you know, we are so much stronger with our, with our connections versus being competition. And what I think too, is like, if you're breathing deeply, you're not going to feel like it's competition because that's again, Mm -hmm. ego, that's scarcity mode. That's not how you stay open. That's not how you breathe deeply. And I just, thank you so much for joining me. And for oh, thank you for having me. Yes. yes. I appreciate the connection. And I think it's so important because we, we have different focuses and different uh-huh. backgrounds. So yeah. it's just wonderful to be able to learn from each other uh-huh. without that competition competition. And, you know, we're, we're, I'm here to help build you up and you're yeah, here to help build me up. And, and I, I want that, you know, not just with women, but in the broader community too. Yeah. Let's all learn from each other. All right. Well, speaking of building you up, um, tell us where we can follow you, what socials you're on, your handle, your website, yes. anything that helps people Thank find you. you and who's like your ideal client. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm on uh, most social platforms at Haven Breathwork. My website is um, www.havenbreathwork.com. Okay. So pretty easy to find there. Um, you know, as far as my ideal clients, I mean, I, I've worked with, you know, a lot of different people, men and women. I have a client now who's like a post-COVID recovery patient. So we're working on, um, you know, building his lung capacity back up. I mentioned I work with a lot of women who are moms, who are, you know, kind of feeling that survival mode, um, um, you know, feeling and stress and overwhelm. So, um, and I work with corporate clients as well. Um, so coming into the workplace and bringing breath work there to help with stress management. So, uh, I mean, I really work with a lot of different kinds of people and I love that because like there's a type of breath work for everyone, depending on what the challenge is or what you're going through. Um, I really love bringing my expertise and just like tailoring the types of um, sessions, depending on what somebody needs. Um, Well, sounds like you're in the right field then. So much. So, and then do you see patient or do you see clients tell it like via teletherapy or in person? Yeah, I do both. Yeah. If if someone's local, I love to do in-person sessions. Um, and I've done a couple of workshops at yoga studios. Um, and then, you know, if, if you're not local, um, I do, um, classes or sessions on zoom. Very good. So we can be anywhere in the world and we can connect. Oh, I love it. Well, Valerie, is there anything else like we haven't chatted about that you'd love just to plug real quick or want to make sure you get everything in you need? No, I think we've covered everything. It's been a beautiful conversation. It has. It has. Well, thank you so much for being on Breath to Breath. Thank you so much. This has been really fun. All right. Bye. Bye.